Hi, it's Peter Kennedy here. Great to be on the uh, online um, prosperity show today. What we're going to talk about today is, um, you know, your journey in life and your financial journey to success about later on and things like, you know, what you would like to achieve at retirement and how you can actually get there. Have a bit of a discussion around what's stopping you get to that point and what's actually stopping you making a really wise, informed decision and how you can really make a smart choice about decisions you make today by having the right people working with you today that's going to affect that longer term plan. Now, welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, where we explore the stories and strategies of successful entrepreneurs and industry leaders. And boy, today do I have a great a guest for you. Peter, Peter, how are you doing, my friend? Very well, Prosper, you? Fantastic. Now, Peter is a veteran in the financial services industry. He's helped countless clients achieve their financial goals over the past three decades. From his early days at ANZ to St. George's Bank and AMP to his current role as a credit representative with Westgate Financial Services Limited. But that is just a resume, um, you know, that Peter would read out when he's going out to seek a job. Peter's job is to help people with financial education and guidance. And in addition to his expertise in now the mortgage broking and a financial planning industry, Peter wants to help you succeed and make sense of the money that you have right now. Now, Peter, I could go on and on and you haven't tagged your ear like you said you would. So it means I'm on the right track. But you tell us your story. What is it that actually makes you get out of bed every single day, Peter? Thanks, Prosper. Really, really, really thrilled to uh, to be part of this and to try and help uh, pass on some of my experience and, and wisdom from, from my years. So I'm, I'm a part of a group called Electo Finance. Um, we're a group of, of guys that got together several years ago. We've got a very broad range of experience and knowledge, and we bring that all together to, to sort of help people in residential, commercial, business, whatever it is. So it could be people's personal situation. It could be their professional and their business situation. And one of the things that we really try and work through is what is the per person after and then trying to find a solution for that. Um, I could go off on all sorts of tangents and talk about all sorts of things and it'd just go over people's heads. So I like to find out how can we improve somebody's situation personally or professionally. Um, and that's my passion. Fantastic. A lot of people try to grow their own wealth. And obviously, without the education and the guidance, it will be, um, you know, something that will be a hard task. So you set up your own financial services business in, was it 20, 0, 20, 20, 0, 3, right? Yes. And, you know, obviously, you've gone through a few, um, you know, market or economic ups and downs. What are some of the challenges and rewards that you've um, sort of experienced in that time since you started your business in 20? Yeah. Well, when I started in financial services, it was the late 80s. So home loan interest rates were around 18%. Um, you know, it was an extraordinary time to be learning lending. And then there was just the, the late 80s crash. Um, there was people handing back exotic cars, people walking away from their homes, and it was a horrific time. But I learned a lot during about that was that when things are really really tough that's when people really need that hand on their shoulder to help them get through and and we've experienced a couple of those with the gfc and we're now in that position again and um when things are flying and everything's going great it's easy you can go wherever you want do whatever you want it's fantastic but right here right now in these tough times if you don't have that truly independent person sitting with you and helping guide you you really could end up down a path that um, doesn't end well. So I, I really have transformed many people's lives. I've saved their houses. Um, I've saved their businesses. And on the flip side, I've actually had told people, you actually need to sell your house. You need to consolidate, breathe, and go again. So, you know, re really having that sort of hard conversation with people is, is stuff that, uh, that, that I really enjoy, really enjoy doing. Fantastic. And hard conversations have to be had. I, I grew up in Zimbabwe. I don't know if you know that part, uh, Peter, yeah. where predominantly the inflation was so high 
that people didn't even manage to uh, plan ahead. Okay, I'll give you a specific scenario where, you know, when you go into Coles and you're trying to buy milk, all right, and maybe you get the catalog on your way in, the catalog might say that milk is $2. By the time you walk all the way to the fridges and walk all the way back to purchase that milk, you are now paying $5 for that um, same product. So a lot of people did not plan their um, you know, finances right and inflation just kept eating into their money. Now you are in a unique position where you have um, you know, qualifications as a mortgage broker and you're also a financial planner. How do you use these two um, you know, uh, unique skills yeah. in order to actually really help people with their financial goals? Yeah, look, gaining my financial planning qualification to complement my finance broking qualification has really helped me to have a, a, a far greater in-depth um, conversation with, with people. Um, I'm currently, um, I'm no longer licensed as a financial planner because it really is another avenue that's really complex and, and I can't do it all. So, but I have the skills and the knowledge to have that sort of um, initial macro sort of, you know, discussion about, you know, what you're thinking of doing, what your plans may be. And then I'll bring in that licensed financial planner to take that to the next level. So as an example, I might sort of say to somebody who's thinking about buying an investment property, I might say to them, do you like risk? And they might say, no, I don't like risk. Then I might say, well, why are you buying an investment property? And they go, what do you mean? And they say, well, not all properties are the same. So I, I then take it to the next level when I'll say to them, when do you want to retire? And how much money do you want to earn in today's terms? You know, they might be 28 years old and thinking, what are you talking about retirement for? Because the decisions they make today can have a significant impact in 30 years time. So then I'll bring a financial planner in to then look at, okay, is this buying this investment property right part of their strategy for their stage of life? And how's that going to impact their end goal at the retirement? So you know, having that skill and that experience of being a financial planner, I can have a, a, a much deeper conversation about the decision you make today. Fantastic. Talking about deeper conversations, you have also had the privilege of living in 22 different homes and houses. Yeah. And that means you would have had either an experience, 22 separate occasions, um, you know, for you to have a real estate sort of uh, transaction there. Tell us a little bit about what was going on there and what that actually, um, you know, helped you now in your job as being a qualified property advocate as well. Yeah. So my wonderful late father, he used to work um, for the for the banks in regional Victoria in the country. And every couple of years they'd move. So the first couple of years there was, you know, moving, you know, every two years to a different house, to a different property, what have you. And, and then we moved to the big city of Melbourne and once again, that was more moves and, and, and more properties. And, and then you get married and you upgrade houses and that type of stuff. And then, you know, with family and, and unfortunately, you know, um, a, a divorce happens. So then there's relationship change and all that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, having that sort of experience myself um, and living in so many different areas and different properties has just given me a greater appreciation for what truly makes a home and also what people are attracted to. Um, so I, I talk about property as, as having emotion because it, it is someone's home, whether you live in it as an owner or whether you live in it as a, as a tenant. So if you're buying an investment property, it's someone's home. So be respectful of that, but also you know, find out what would attract a tenant to your home and keep the tenant in, in your home. So, And there's also a shift now with a, a phrase called rent vesting. So what rent vesting is, you rent where you want to live for lifestyle and you invest where you're going to get either the best yield or return or the best capital growth. So having that, and it's, a, it's you know, I've certainly, you know, rented and it's given me a great opportunity to, to live in some amazing, amazing places. And there's many people who do that for their life, especially in places overseas, you know, renting for people's lives is just the way it is. If you're in London or New York, it's, it's just common. But we have a little of this adage here in Australia is you've got to own your home. It's like, well, you don't necessarily have to, but don't ignore your long-term strategy about building your wealth um, to make sure that you can cover off things for the, the what-if moments and a, a what-if moment. 
you know, um, from a health point of view, because your health is your biggest asset, because your health gives you the ability to earn income. So if you can't earn income for the next 25 years, your long-term strategy can fall off the perch because you don't have that ability to do it. So make sure that you protect your income if something terrible happens, touch wood. So there's so many different elements just rather than just talking about an interest rate. So, yeah. Fantastic. I mean, obviously touch wood on that because if you can't do, if you, can't, you don't, if you don't feel well, you can't do well. So you really touched upon something that I think a lot of people, especially in Australia, like you mentioned, you know, the, the, the Aussie dream is to own your own property and fully pay for it, not even look at whatever equity you have in there, but just not have a mortgage. Um, but you're also introducing something um, that, you know, the younger sort of millennial type people will be interested in, which is the rent vesting. Can you just touch upon that? Is it something that you would say maybe um, encourage people to really, um, you know, look into so that they magnify on their lifestyle while still having some sort of a um, income coming in? Um, which then supports that lifestyle just in the event that maybe something does happen, you can still continue, um, you know, without any ebbs and flows. Yeah, so it could be, and it's it's very much the the global pandemic changed how people work. So, you know, some people love the sunshine. So they don't necessarily want to be in the southern states during the, the sunny periods. So whether people want to work in Bali or Thailand or Queensland, in the winter months, they can actually do that. But if they own a home and have a mortgage, they've then got to deal with what do I do with my home? Like, and moving stuff. Whereas people can very much work remotely. And some people will just work somewhere around the world because they love the area and love the environment. It might be for three months, might be six months, might be for a couple of years. And you don't then have to have the stamp duty costs. You then don't have to have the maintenance if the hot water service packs up or something like that. The landlord has to pay for that, okay? So it's that real change in that lifestyle. Um, and we may have a, a family figure in your ear saying, oh, no, you've got to get your own home and yeah, you've got to have a mortgage for yourself. And that might be a previous generational thought. Um, so I really love working in maybe some more progressive thoughts around, around that type of thing. Fantastic. You brought in my favorite character in this whole episode, Auntie Sally. So Auntie Sally is that lady or, um, you know, gentleman that sits right at the corner of the dinner table at Christmas or at barbecues and always has an opinion around property, around investments or around politics or whatever is happening in the world. So what sort of advice do you have for people who are considering maybe buying or selling property in this sort of current market? And how can a property advocate like yourself help them navigate this process? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a really, really good, um, really good question. One of the things I say to people is if you've got a, um, an earache, do you go to the butcher? No, you go to an ear specialist. If you've got a problem with your car's gearbox, do you go to the dentist? No, you don't. So when people are getting advice around a specific area, and let's say it's property, why are you taking it from, you know, the, the person that runs a bicycle shop? Um, why are you taking advice from the person that's selling high-rise apartments in Broome? There's no high-rise apartments in Broome, but you know what I mean. Like, so if you're only selling one particular thing in one particular area, um, they're only going to sell you that. If you're going to get advice from someone that doesn't have the experience and knowledge and independence, like, what sort of advice are you really getting? And and it, it's interesting with advice is that finding independent advice, and a lot of times you've got to pay for it. So you know, um, not everything is free. So sometimes you need to invest some money to get some good independent advice, but make sure it's independent. Fantastic. And you segue rightfully into the part where, um, you know, you let people know how can they get this advice then from you? What would be the best way that people can maybe start their journey with you, um, you know, so that they don't fall prey to the spruikers that you've mentioned or the people that don't um, have that independent advice you're, you're, you're talking about? Yeah. 
look, re- reaching out to reaching out to myself, you know, via email, via mobile. I'm sure we can share share those those details. Yes. Um, to to at least just have that initial discussion, because if we at least have an initial discussion, and you go away and act upon it, and it improves your situation, and we never talk again. I I I feel fulfilled. Um, if you then want to take it further, engage me for for my services to assist. Um, absolutely here to uh, here to do that. Uh, if you want to seek some other opinions, that's okay too. I, I encourage that. So, um, but let's just start the conversation because everybody's circumstances are different. Everybody, um, and especially when I deal with couples, couples there's always they have a difference of opinion, and I've never met a couple in my thirty odd years that has been exactly on the same page. So if you're in a relationship and your partner thinks differently to you, that's common and that's normal. Don't think that's odd and it's actually healthy. And I can actually work some sort of equilibrium to make sure that both sides and both opinions are then sort of taken into consideration and implore those people to make an informed decision on some information that I've actually provided. Fantastic. I know the rental market, finances, uh, real estate and everything else, it's usually the same, um, you know, scenarios. But obviously the difference now is people's individual circumstances. Now, how then, I mean, obviously you've been in the game for a very long time. How do you stay up to date with maybe the latest um, you know, industry happenings and maybe the best practices and what sort of resources do you recommend, you know, other people in this field to stay abreast with what's actually happening and not get stagnant, um, you know, in, in, in the changes that are happening in this industry? Well, we have um, what's called continuing professional development. So as a, as a licensed broker, we have to attend many, many events so I go to a lot of events, a lot of Zoom calls, that type of stuff, to find out what is happening, what's happening in the market. And I, I actually, um, I really enjoy being an active member of our industry and going to these events. Um, so it, it's like any, you only get out what you put in. So you could go to some of these events, have a drink, have a chat, have a laugh and go home, or you can truly invest. So, you know, we get world-class economists that speak. You know, we get all sorts of industry, um, you know, specials that come in. Um, you know, there's there's people talking about fraud and cyber security and interest rates and everything else like that. So when you engage somebody like me behind the scenes, I do all that. So and all that professional development gets recorded. So for me to keep my license, I need to do that. So um, and for the public to try and find this information, it's it's really tricky. It's very time consuming, and it's like anything. It's confusing. A lot of acronyms. Um, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Um, I've, I've, I'm thinking of setting up a, a, a group called AAA. It's the Association Against Acronyms. Um, <laughs> it's just a mindset. Absolutely. I, I usually, I know we, we, without, um, we, with utmost love and respect, I work with a lot of consultants and, um, I, the first question I ask them is who is behind the alphabet soup? You know what I mean? Cause for me, it's just a number of, acronyms that people have acquired but do your clients and future prospects actually understand who you are what it is that you do and what they should expect from a professional like yourself so i'm, I'm glad that you had a, a laugh and a dig at that so i can use this part of the um you know the recordings when i do come across somebody with an alphabet soup and i'll be like hey that wasn't my words <laughs> Get it from Peter. Now, finally, <laughs> I know we could go on and on. Um, yeah. You know, Peter, we're having fun here. What, what, what are your, what are your sort of plans? And maybe you can give us a few goals, considering you're always learning new things. You've been there, done that. You know, lived in twenty-two properties. What's next? What, what can people expect from <clears throat> Peter? Especially the people that, um, you know, have taken a liking to who you are right now and want to explore more about how they can start working with you. So what, what can you excite with them in the future? Let's have the chat. Let's find out where you are here, right. where you want to go. So are you on track to reach a, a specific point in, in time? And let's, let's have the conversation. One of the things I find is the biggest detriment to people's success is procrastination. 
So we'll have that discussion. It'll be a healthy discussion. And then people don't act upon it. And then we might chat in a couple of years' time. I'll say, how are you going? How's it all going? They're going, oh, yeah, look, we haven't done anything yet. Okay, let's sit down again. We'll have a talk about it. So procrastination, make a decision. Make sure it's informed. Act upon it. It may not be right to do now, but I'll let you know the time frame around when it works for you. So it could be your first property. It could be your business. You, know, you might want to take your business to the next level. You might want to buy that investment property or the 10th or the 20th or 30th. I can help you navigate through that. But start. let's start the conversation. Fantastic. Wise words from a wise man. If you don't start now, it's not going to get started. And procrastination is one of those things that, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And, um, you know, the next day still comes. Things happen. Life happens. Kids happen. I was telling you, Peter, <laughs> about my kids earlier on. And now you've yep. got grandkids of your own. And had you not done what you're doing right now, you wouldn't have some sort of an inheritance for them to, um, you know, uh, continue with their lives. Now, I, I can't thank you enough for the time that you spend with us on the call today. And for those that are watching right now, that's it for today. I mean, if you want more from Peter, you can definitely reach out to him. I'm going to be putting all the information at the bottom there. And um, yeah, that's it for today's episode on the Online Prosperity Show. I really hope you've enjoyed our conversation with Peter Kennedy and obviously gained valuable insights into the world of financial services and real estate. Now, whether you're a seasoned professional or you're just starting out, as you can tell, Peter's experience and wisdom offer plenty of inspiration and guidance for anyone that's looking to succeed in these fields. I'd like to thank Peter for sharing his time and expertise with us today. And I really wish him continued success in his career and beyond. And good luck with the grandkids there, um, you know, moving forward, uh, Peter. Thanks, Prosper. Fantastic. All right. Those that are watching right now, join us again soon for more stories of entrepreneurship, innovation, and prosperity. Bye for now.